السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آج ہم بات کرنے جا رہے ہیں ڈائٹمز کی اور اگلیوناڈس کی دیز آر دا ریمیننگ ٹو گروپس آف پلانٹ لائک پروٹیسٹس وی ہیو آلریڈی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ڈائنو فلائجیٹس اوکے سو ڈائٹمز آر یونی سیلولر فوٹو سنتھیٹک آرگنزمز اوکے دے کنسٹیوٹ اے لارج پورشن آف فائٹو پلانٹن فائٹو پلانٹن آر دا اسمال لیونگ آرگنزمز دیٹ آکر آن دا سرفیس آف واٹر باڈیز اینڈ دیز فائٹو پلانٹن دے پوسس فوٹو سنتھیٹک پگمنٹس اینڈ ہینس دے ایکٹ ایز میجر سورس آف ارتھس آکسیجن دے آکر ایز فائٹو پلانٹن بوتھ ان میرین ایز ویل ایز فریش واٹرس ناؤ دے آر سیمیٹری ٹو ٹائپس آف سیمیٹریز آر فاؤنڈ ان ڈائٹمز ون از ریڈل سیمیٹری اینڈ سیکنڈ ون از آئیسو بائلیٹرل سیمیٹری ان کیس آف ریڈل ریڈلی سیمیٹریکل آرگنزمز ہیئر The body can be divided into two equal halves by more than one plane. And this type of symmetry is characteristic of centrails and it includes Cyclotella, Budelphia, Trisertium and Melosera. Now another type is isobilateral symmetry. Isobilateral symmetry is that type of symmetry when you can divide the body of the organism into two equal halves only by a single plane. And the example is pineals and under pineals there are different organisms. We show this type of symmetry. Pinularia, Cindera, Actinella and Navicula. Now the structure of uh, their cells and cell wall. The cells of the atoms are also known as first tools or shells. Okay, this is very much important. Now their cell wall. Besides cellulose, the cell wall of the atoms contains Uh, glass like silica it also contains glass like silica and this cell wall it is constituted of two overlapping halves uh, uh, upper one and the lower one that fit together like the two parts of a sew box okay the upper one is known as epithica the upper one has this known as epithica and lower one is known as hypothica yahan pe aap dekh lijiye this is epithica and lower one is known as hypothica okay Now their motility, are they motile or immotile? The diatoms, they are immotile because they lack flagella. Flagella are absent, okay? But they show some sort of gliding movement, okay? Now their chloroplasts. The chloroplasts found in diatoms, they are discoid and they contain chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, carotenes, diatoxanthin, diadenoxanthin and finally fucoxanthin okay there is an exception nitisia alba the name itself includes it is having white color okay alba means white nitisia alba it does not contain chromatophores when it does not contain chromatophores obviously it is lacking the photosynthetic pigments that is why it is yellow, uh, uh, white in color okay it ca- it is not able to manufacture its own organic food material through photosynthesis and hence it it is mode of nutrition is saprotrophic it is just like fungi okay it uh, absorbs the organic matter through its body surface now there are reserve food material the reserve food material found in diatoms includes oil and chrysolaminarin chrysolaminarin is a special type of polysaccharide or leucosin okay chrysolaminarin or leucosin and oil these represent the characteristic uh, reserve food materials found in diatoms now their reproduction they reproduce both by asexual as well as sexual means asexual reproduction occurs by binary fission and sexual reproduction takes place by the fusion of gametes now some examples of diatoms we have triceratium pleurosigma navicula Symbella, Amphipleura, Nitisia, Melosera, and finally Pinularia. Now another group of uh, plant-like protists includes Euglunides. Euglunides are basically unicellular flagellate protists. They possess flagella. Okay. And they possess a characteristic eye spot. And this eye spot... it helps in phototaxis that means movement in response to light 
it helps the lunar disk to move in response to the stimulus of light. Now their cell wall, the euglenides, they completely uh, lack the cell wall. Cell wall is completely absent. In a steed, their body is covered by thin and flexible follicle. And this follicle, it contains oblique but parallel strips, which are called as myonyms. Okay, this is the body of the euglenide. It uh, lacks cell wall, but it contains outer covering which is known as pellicle and this pellicle contains oblique but parallel strips and these strips are known as myonins okay the pellicle is composed of an elastic protein and small amount of lipid or carbohydrates jo pellicle hota hai ye compose hua hota hai ek elastic protein ka and it also contains small amount of lipid or carbohydrates now their flagella they possess two flagella. Usually one is long and another one is short. And these flagella bear small hair-like structures on their body uh, surface. Okay. Metaboli is another important feature associated with euglenides. Metaboli means uh, these organisms they can undergo creeping. Creeping means they can go into small uh, holes. Okay. They can creep into small crevices through expansion and contraction. Their body is capable of expansion and contraction because of which they can creep into small structures. The apical end of the body bears a small invagination. Okay, this one, this is the small invagination. And this small invagination is having three parts. The first one is cytostome. It is uh, basically acting as the mouth. Then we have cytopharynx. Inner to a cy a cytostome, there is cytopharynx, this one. And this cytopharynx is galater canal and finally the reservoir. Here this is the reservoir. Okay. Now another interesting feature uh, in euglenides is paraflagellar body. It is basically the swelling at which two flagella join here. This is the paraflagellar body here. This small spot is the paraflagellar body. It represents the place where the two flagella join. Okay. Now the eye spot or stigma. Eye spot or stigma, it is basically an orange red colored structure which is located at the base of flagella. And this orange red colored structure, it is made up of astaxanthin pigment here you can see this red portion here it represents the eye spot or stigma it is composed of astaxanthin and this eye spot and paraflagellar body both the eye spot here this is the eye spot red uh, color dot and this one is the paraflagellar body okay they act as photoreceptors both eye spot and paraflagellar body they act as photoreceptors they receive the light stimuli okay now they are nutrition they are holophytic that means they are plant like they are photo autotrophic because they contain photosynthetic pigments they manufacture their own organic food material however there are some exceptions for example rhabdomonas is saprobic it is uh, just like fungi and peranema is holozoic it is like animal it uh, consumes solid organic matter some uh, of these uh, eglunides they are they show mixotropic mode of nutrition for example it has been found that some holophytic forms okay they pick up organic compounds from the outside medium besides manufacture th manufacturing their own organic food material some holophytes they are capable of getting the organic food material from the outside medium that is why they are known as mixotropic they show two modes of nutrition okay holophytic as well as holozoic now their reproduction reproduction occurs uh, usually by longitudinal binary fission for example this is the body of an euglenoid here division occurs this way okay longitudinally 
this is the binary fission it leads to the generation of two cells okay now some examples important examples of uh, euglenides includes euglena facus ut reptia trichelomonas and peri peranima sorry so these are some important examples of euglenides euglena facus utreptia trichelomonas and peranima so this was all about uh, diatoms and euglenides i hope you all understand this see you soon with uh, the next part till then stay happy and god bless you all